It's authentic. When we come to your school, we all in the stands with you. Touch it's eggs. inspirational. The, the Honeybees is more than just about the field show. It's about inspiring young women. It's groundbreaking. Oh my gosh, there's a girl trying out for drum major. All this stuff. I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. And then I got it. I was like, yeah, I did it. From the campus to the community, we cover everything HBCU. It can definitely change the face of HBCUs, period. It's HBCU 101. What's up, everybody, and welcome to HBC 101. I am your host, Jaleel Thurman. HBC 101 is a show that will take you all around the world and give you the ins and outs of what's happening in the HBCU space and give you a little bit of that HBCU flavor. <laughs> now, one thing that makes the HBCU culture so unique is homecoming, all right? When it comes to homecoming, you never know who you'll see or who you'll meet. So let's take a flashback to Virginia State University homecoming last year where I was able to catch up with some of your favorite celebrities and notable alums. Said it's your talk, 101. Line, don't give your, too much. Don't, no, uh. Your talk, 101. We had BSU, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Do it, do it for BSU. It's always love when I come to Virginia State. I'm glad it's always love because the campus is always changing every year I get here. Right. So you gotta get the love so they can tell you where the bathrooms are. Wow. <laughs> Something you to know. Need that. No, it's need always that. a good feeling to see alumni like yeah. that was old heads when I was young. Yeah. And now I'm an old head myself. True. So true. it's cool to see that whole old head tradition pass and just seeing how many students still come out to Virginia State, how the alumni still supports. Yeah. And see how the campus continue to grow. New sides, no other side like new sides. Right, right. When you come back to your yard, you see the wonderful people hanging out and whatnot, yeah. and the love and the it's just the camaraderie. You can't sell it, you can't teach it. You have to experience it. Describe Virginia State's homecoming. Family, why? HBCU experience. Huh? It's one of a kind, yeah, right? You're getting to get the experience of it today. Definitely. Talk to me a bit about the love I've and what been, you've been able I've to experience. I've been here like two, three times, and um, it's always been love. I love this school. It kind of made me want to go to school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's so great. when a school make you like feel like you belong, it's dope. Are you ready? You, you ready, mama? You ready? You ready? They prepared me for a lot of this. Like, I was a mass comm major. They told me how to hustle, how to complete, how to finish, be competitive. Yeah. My teachers, I network, yeah. OD. They definitely believed in me. I still have a lot of them that, like, I reach out to. So State is a good place, and I'm happy to be home. I became a writer at Virginia State. I became a, I fell in love with reading at Virginia State. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, like, this anti-social person when I came to Virginia yeah. State, believing, you know, I speak in front of crowds now with 3,000 plus people, and all of that happened from the energy, the people, at Virginia State. Like, I done finally recorded a self-titled album called T-Soul, and I've been working in, uh, in Stockholm, Sweden with some amazing you yeah. know, musicians. And I've traveled, you know, since the show, I've traveled to Australia, I've traveled to Paris, I've traveled to Sweden, yeah. uh, and I've been working with some amazing musicians. We're going to put out some music that I think not only going to change my life, it's going to change the life of all the T-Soldiers that started right here at Virginia State Yo. years ago. Don't you, don't you act like I ain't nothing. You know we got a vibe, but you stay front and trying to get the mood right. Come and say something, I'ma get the room tonight. First and foremost, y'all got a crazy thing. Sigma story, but as the world know, Toy Story. Tell me a little bit about why y'all chose that. Well, at the end of the day, it's a homecoming step show, so we got all age groups coming, so we want to make it relatable to okay. everybody. VSU has definitely prepared me. Um, all the different organizations, all the blood, sweat, and tears, yeah. long hours, yeah. you know, pulling together, um, definitely prepared me yeah. for yeah. my career in the entertainment business. Um, so thankful for VSU, definitely. seriously. Definitely. Yeah. Now look, you had a very dope 
dope opportunity yeah. to perform <laughs> in California yeah. with Beyonce. Let's talk about that. I mean, it was my dream. Like, yeah. I've wanted it since I was a little girl, yeah. and it took 10 years to get it. I have the devastated divas of the Alpha Eta Shop, the Bucks of the Fitness Award Corporate. They shining off and everything. They give me all the ooh, ooh I need right now. Yeah. So look, let's talk, right? Y'all came out there. Y'all did y'all thing on the step show. Okay. Let's talk about some of that preparation. Uh, I mean, it was a lot of hard work. Uh, literally, we switched some things around the last 48 hours. Yeah. But my team pushed through because we strong and that's what we do. Right, that's right. Alpha Ada. Right, right. What can we expect from y'all for future breakfast? Um, Just expect for us to always come with E and come hard. That's what Alpha Ada do. And there you have it. The Virginia State University home of the Trojans. We have been able to truly give you the inside scoop of homecoming from the yard to the step show to even the alumni scoop. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but I got excited for homecoming. When we come back, we're gonna go one-on-one -on -one with a North Carolina a t State University alum who is not only known as a deal maker, but as a hard worker who takes pride in the success of his clients. Fred Whitaker, CEO of Journey Enterprises and Celebrity Manager, joins us on set, coming up next. You're watching HBCU 101 on Aspire TV. Welcome back to HBCU 101 on Aspire TV. This is David Aguilar. He's been developing a bird's eye view for life. HBC 101 is very excited to have the opportunity to chop it up with North Carolina and Tilo, CEO of Journey Enterprises, and celebrity manager Fred Wick. Yo, Fred. My guy. What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, sir? I first and foremost, welcome to the show. I appreciate you for gracing us. No, stop. Thank you for having me. No. Thank you. Whatever you need. You need my guy. Whatever <laughs> you need. Whatever you need. So listen, Fred. Let's mm -hmm. talk HBCUs, right? Absolutely. All right. HBCUs have been known to produce some great, predominantly excellent people within the community, right? However, you chose North Carolina A&T. Why A&T? And what was it like being an Aggie? Actually, I actually chose Elizabeth City State University first. Okay. And then I transferred to A&T because my best friend, Bebe, shout out to Bebe, that's my guy. He convinced me to come to A&T and it changed my life. Like it okay. literally changed my life. It was one of those things where it put me in an environment in a community where it was all about building and learning and being active in the community and, um, you know, just giving it back. Okay. So if if it wasn't for my guy, Bebe, like I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Right, right, yes. right, right. Shout out to Bebe for that because mm -hmm. I think HBCUs in general help produce a lot of... HBCUs, yeah, HBCUs, is like, it's like a, a, it's a, it's a family environment type setting where it's not as big as like the other schools, so to say, but it's one of those things where it's a tight niche community where everybody know each other and everybody's trying to help each other and everybody's trying to support each other. So no matter what you're trying to do, you're gonna have that support. Like to this day, after graduating from college 15 years ago, mm. I still make a lot of money in business with people that I went to school with at a and Okay. to this day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, that's beautiful because a lot of people can't say that, right? Because that means you built a good sphere of influence, a good circle of friends. But let's let's talk about the business a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've been in the profession for a while, for at least over a decade now, right? And you've been able to broker deals. A decade sound old. Am I that old? <laughs> Yo, just a little bit. Am just I a little that bit. old? You know, oh, this is a little man. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been able to develop not only relationships along the way, but also help to elevate some mm -hmm. of the celebrities that we're familiar with, like Lala Anthony, uh, Angela Simmons, and Terrence J. Mm -hmm. um, so what has that life been like, being able to broker those deals and, and help those careers? Um, it's been amazing, man. I, I say to people all the time that I have good problems. And, and it's one of those things where I enjoy what I do. Okay. And I'm naturally used to like taking care of people and showing people a good time and making people a straight. And over the years, I, was, I started to realize, oh, I can make a lot of money doing this. Right. So the things that I did at HBCU was like when I was in college, I was the DJ. I threw all of the parties. So I'm used to like, hey, let me help you with this. Hey, young ladies, y'all come to this. I got y'all. I got you. So it was one of those things that when I got to the talent management thing, it was it was just it was organic. Okay. It, it, it was very organic for me. And, um, you know, just, it's just natural, man. Like, I, 
I don't know how to explain it, no. but it, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like. I get that. I get that. Now, now I assume you were able to then take your talents from, you know, throwing parties and mm -hmm. brand management, talents management. But what are some of the things you actually learned from the business side that has then made you successful? I mean, communication. Um, the, the business side of it is, you know, being a man of your word. Okay. So okay. if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. It's, it's not about the dollar amount. It's about accomplishing that goal and what what is it that the client or the talent is trying to do or okay. what is it that the brand is trying to do. So, okay. it's, yeah, it's just, it's just been a man of your word, man. Like, at the end of the day, like, that's all you got. Nah, it's crazy that you said it. My mother told me, she was like, listen, son. I don't care what you're doing, like she said, but all a man have in this world is his word. It's his word. That's all you got. And that's all I live by, so I definitely understand that. That's right? all you got. So now, <clears throat> outside you being a hard worker, outside you being dedicated, um, you have so many things going on, but, you know, in Rolling Loud, when Rolling Out, you mentioned that, you know, your future is limitless, right? Absolutely. So what is the future like in a perfect world for Freeway? My daughter having no worries. My family having no worries. My, I'm not gonna say my daughter's kids because I don't want her to have kids because she's not dating. But <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandkids, grandkids, it's, it's creating a legacy. It's creating a thing that when they walk in the room, they're like, hey, that's Fred Whitaker's daughter. That's da -da -da. He did this, this, and this. So for me, it's about making sure that they're okay. Okay. And just being a gatekeeper it's, or whatever. Nah, like. it's, it's bigger than being a gatekeeper. It's just one of those things where it's like, yo, you want to you wanna lead the way. Like, I, I say to people all the time, and I get into arguments with people, like, when it comes to my brother DJ or my brother Eric or my sister Courtney, and they, like, are struggling with certain things, mm -hmm. I'm like, they shouldn't struggle because I'm the big brother. Okay. I went through this window for them. Right. So when they come through, they get a pass. They best. Yo, it's crazy that you said it because I don't know the, the age difference between your uh, siblings, but I have a 15 year old sister, you know, mm -hmm. 12 years apart. So it's like, I'm the first one to really go to college. I'm the first one that's like, yo, we're going to chase a dream. And my parents did things a little differently. So I'm the same I, way. I'm like, yo. You know, I'm the, I like, think I'm the only entrepreneur in my family. Like, yeah. everybody always said nine to five to yeah. me. Like, and my mother used to say all the time when I was young, I was like, yo, I can't do a nine to five. Like, yeah. I don't, like, I can't. I can't be complacent. I can't be in a box. Yeah. I want to be out of the box. I want to be different. I want to work 24 hours. I want to unlimited, like, I want to be able to dictate how much money I'm going to make for the year. I don't want you to tell me how much you're going to pay me. No, mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and get okay. what I want. This is my number for the year. I'm going to okay. go get it. That's a bet. That's a bet. Hey, but listen, Fred, first and foremost, I agree with you. That's why I kind of changed my life around my skin. Because I'm trying to be like, you know. my God. <laughs> hey, but listen, stay tuned. We come right back. We're going to have Fred play. I got five on it, all right? Who's yards more lit? Winston Salem State University or North Carolina Central University? <laughs> yeah. Coming up next on HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101 on Aspire TV. Yo, Fred, I Got Five on it. It's a game that we play with all our guests. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a topic, mm -hmm. and you're going to pick this or that. This or that. Okay. Real simple. Cool. You got it? All right, we're going to talk bands first, all right? All right, let's go. We're going to go with Prairie View and m University and the March and Storm or Southern University and the Human Jukebox. Yeah, that's that's tough, but I'm gonna go with North Carolina A&T because uh, my LB was a drum major. Okay. So listen, uh, y'all don't want that smoke with A&T. No, no smoke with A&T. No smoke with A&T. Yeah. We're gonna talk directors. We're gonna Spike Lee, all right, or Robert Townsend. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Spike Lee only because the last time I went to South Africa, we was on the same flight. So we like, we, we bonded. Okay. okay. And he's cool. a Knicks fan and I'm a diehard Knicks oh, fan. Bonus. Spike Lee. Right there. That's Easy right breezy. There. I, I've never met uh, Robert Thompson, so. Okay, so you can't, there's no, no yeah. problem there. No, I don't, right. I don't want no beef there. <laughs> no beef there. The real HU, Howard University or Hampton University? G Ho University, man. I'm <laughs> telling y'all, y'all don't want this smoke, man. Like, yo, I'm consistent. I've been to Howard's homecoming. I've been to Hampton's homecoming. Okay. It's cute. It's just not. 
It's not Geo. Yeah, it's not okay. Geo, man. Listen, Geo right. special. All right, so listen, mm -hmm. you went to Ante in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So you've been, you visited many yards. Yes. All right. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Who's yards more lit? Winston Salem State University or North Carolina Central University? <laughs> Yo, AT, man. Yo, AT yard is the litter. So AT just got everything on lock. Absolutely. Everything on lock. No, what camera I'm looking at? What, this you're one? Right this here. one? Yeah. You're right here. Y'all don't want yeah. no smoke with AT. It's the greatest yard, greatest homecoming. Just come find me there, and I promise you, I'll show you an amazing time. Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. I ain't messing with you. Hey, listen. Yeah. It's just little. It's friends. It's HBCU 101. Hey, listen. We definitely appreciate y'all, all right? Stay tuned. Coming up next on HBCU 101. And she was like, bro, you should go to Morehouse. They wear suits like you. They come to the game so neat, all that. And then I got here. It's like, yeah. Welcome back to HBCU 101 on Aspire TV. Coming up next week, here on HBCU 101, Jalen McKee, a Savannah State University alum, joins us on the couch as she shares her journey to becoming a publicist in which she only had $500 and two suitcases full of clothes to her name. That wasn't fulfilling for me. Right. Like, I just knew that, like, somewhere deep down inside, God didn't just put me on this earth to pay bills and die. Okay. Like, I have okay. to just, like, I had to find yeah. it, whatever it was. Now, I don't know who has the best tailgate, but Alcorn State has to be in a conversation. You know why? Because you can get you some of those red roll sausages that's, ah, delicious. The food, the vibe is just so crazy. The Alcorn State head football coach, Fred McNair, brother of Air McNair, Steve himself, <laughs> pulls up to each tailgate after each home game. I do, and then one of the biggest thing is that, you know, I always try to mingle with the, with the fans and the alumni, and, and after everybody leaves the field, I, I'm probably the last one out of the dressing room, so I'll make my way around and stay in the parking lot. If anybody want to talk, you know, I'm willing to talk, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm just that kind of person. I'm very humble, and, you know, I, I love the fans. I love the alumni, and, you know, and I love Alcorn State University the most uh, because they gave me an opportunity to be where I'm at right now. So uh, anytime that, you know, schools reach out to you, and such as Alcorn, which I graduated from, got my master's from, and. I just feel like it's giving back, and I think this is a good way of giving back to the university, of coming back and being the head football coach, you know, and, uh, you know, the tailgate part, I go and dress down, I get out of my all corn fatigue, and, and I'm mingling with the crowd, and, you know, and uh, a lot of people, they, they don't, they really don't see me all the time, but when I ain't got my all corn gear on, they look at me kind of strange, you Coach Mack now? Yeah, I'm Coach Mack now, you know, uh, the Malloys, they've been very good in tailgate, man, I go to their tailgate after every game eat, eat, and eat. And uh, we have a lot of fun, listen to the music, one or two o'clock in the morning. As long as they play it, I'll stay right there with them. Knowing I gotta get up the next morning for film, so, so it's exciting at Alcorn, man, I love it. The Gates Scholarship is super competitive. Only 1,000 students are awarded the scholarship each year. Edward Nelson at Morehouse College is one of those students. And he has an incredible story of defying the odds. Now, the Bill Gates Millennium Scholarship is basically, it's a scholarship for minorities and it's a pool of, I want to say, 60,000 applicants and they pick a thousand people to win, people from all over, and like, I was blessed to be a part of that percentage, so it's, you write eight essays and it's essays asking you a certain number of things, like what's your strongest subject, what's your weakest subject, tell us about extracurricular activities, and um, one of the prompt I remember was it said, tell me about a time you or others were treated unfairly. And to this day, I think that's the prompt that won me the essay. Cause it's like, I, I just told a story about where I was actually from. Like I know probably other people would tell the story about getting sent to detention and stuff. But my essay was basically about how like us being from an impoverished area, we, we go to these schools. We got like our history books didn't even have Barack Obama in them. Like, and we got, we used to, historically, the, we're the most winningest team in basketball, like, for, in Pennsylvania history, and, like, our gym class didn't have basketball. I gave up my whole summer leading into senior year. I had a writing coach, Miss Jean Arnold. Shout out to her. And 
we just put those hours in. So it was just like, and I prayed about it. So I felt like it was for me. I asked God for it and I matched my faith with the work. For those eight essays, I probably wrote like 50 drafts. So like, Miss Arnold, she was just a stickler. Like, you know, it's supposed to be a comma here, delete the whole essay, start over. <laughs> like, cause she, the way, as passionate as I am about it, that's how she's one of the people that would go on strike for the school district. So it was just like, she would tell me like, you have to win this. I felt like I owed it to her. I felt like I owed it to my dad. Cause like my dad, he's the same way. Like in the house, he's like, did you do your essays? Did, let me see your essay. Did you do your essays? Did you do your essays? Cause from kindergarten all the way up, like I don't know if that's regular parenting or not. But my dad will always tell me like, I don't have no money to send you to college. Like scholarship, that's, in, in my house, scholarship was top tier. Cause it's like, you have to be a scholar in anything you do. You gotta be able to outthink people, so. I felt like I owed it to him too. Then when I got to Morehouse, it was just, that was the school that like, I got here, it was Spelman, Clark, three schools. I'm like, yeah, that's where I'm coming. <laughs> like, then I talked to Coach Freeman, and I always tell people when I was getting recruited, like all the coaches that I talked to, they would always be like, oh, you got long arms, look at your neck. And like, when I talked to Coach Freeman, we talked about God. So like, that spoke volumes to me. Like, it was a side of football we talked about faith and he like when you come here you're gonna learn things like how to be a man the correct way where the fork's supposed to go stuff like that so it was like this is where I'm supposed to be my mom's a go-getter and that's one of the reasons why I work so hard because to this day my mom she never been on vacation like my mom never been in Miami she's never because she spent every day working like that resonates in my mind like when I'm playing when I'm working out when I'm in class I gotta be better than him because I'm sure his mom been to Miami. <laughs> Mine didn't, so I gotta make something shake. Next week, we take a trip down to Houston to the Cracker Barrel National Battle of the Bands, and we share a really cool story coming out of Bethune Cookman University. From the entire crew, I am your host, Jaleel Thurman, and don't forget to stay up to date on the latest happenings with the HBCU sports and culture at hbcugameday.com. I'll see you next week. Shopping.